All right, welcome back. We're moving on into chapter nine. We're going to start talking first of all about monopolistic competitions. Well, we've been starting this way with most of our types of markets, is that to talk about their characteristics or their traits. Well, the three characteristics of a monopolistic competition is that first of all, lots of sellers. Not as many sellers as in a perfect competition, but certainly way more than in a monopoly, or way more than one. Second of all, the product has to be different, or it doesn't have to be different, it has to just attempt to be differentiated. Monopolistic competition of things like burger joints, right? Burger King, McDonald's, you know, Wendy's, you name all the different ones that are out there. They're all really selling the same thing, burgers. But they advertise to try and make them sound different, to make you want to go to Wendy's over McDonald's because their burgers are really different, even though they both bought the same the, the beef from the exact same spot. They bought the pickles from the exact same spot. They made the ketchup the exact same way. They made the mustard the exact same way. The lettuce is exactly the same. The onions are exactly the same. The bread's exactly the same. Everything is the same. But are they? No. Why? Because they spend money differentiating them. That's another characteristic of a monopolistic competition. And the last one is that it's sort of easy to get in and out of the market. Now, it's not as easy as getting in and out of a perfect competition, right? In a perfect competition, you're growing wheat. And at the end of the season, you decide whether or not you're going to buy corn or wheat seed the next year. Well, in a, in a monopolistic competition, it's still relatively easy. I mean, you still have to get spend a few hundred thousand dollars in order to, to buy a franchise for Dairy Queen or McDonald's or whatever type of, uh, of monopolistic competition joint you want to get into, but it, it's still relatively easy. It still costs you time and it costs you money, though, so it takes a little bit of effort. Now, what I like to do to, to sort of give you a feel for what a monopolistic competition is, is to compare it to the perfect competition and the monopoly. Right? The perfect competition, perfectly elastic demand, supply, standard cost curve, here's your production for maximizing profit. Monopolies, you've got this nice downward sloping demand curve, it's relatively steep because demand is inelastic because your product is unique. Right? There's no substitutes. The more substitutes you have, the more elastic your demand comes, the more it becomes like this, perfectly elastic. We're not here. We're, we're essentially inelastic to some degree. Not perfectly, though, that would be a vertical line. So, what's the merger of these two? Well, here it is, or my variation on the thing. All right? The demand curve, it's not as steep. It's more elastic, right? Because you've got substitutes, but you're trying to point out with your advertising that you really don't. They're not the same, even though, I mean, let's face it, they, they essentially are. All right. So the way you go about figuring out how to maximize profit in a monopolistic competition, exactly the same as everything else. Find out where marginal revenue equals marginal cost produced there. That's the way you do it. So, how do you figure out where your marginal revenue is? Well, if this is your demand, again, let's keep it a straight line so that it, it makes the marginal analysis a little bit easier. If it's straight, but not as steep, you still, you still find marginal revenue the same way. You bisect the angle, cut the angle in half that the demand curve is making. Right, so here's half of the angle. Shoot that down as your marginal revenue. Your supply and your marginal cost are still the same thing. Where those intersect, that's where marginal revenue equals marginal cost. This is your profit maximization point. And your price, just like in a monopoly, you shoot up to get your price off of the demand curve. You shoot up, you're not going to shoot up as far because this is flatter. Well, that's okay though. So here's your price. Are you making a profit at this stage? We don't know. What do we know? When would we be able to tell if there was a profit? We would need to know whether or not what our average total cost curve is. Well, let's, let's pretend like we are making a profit. So let's draw average total cost and average variable cost so that we are making a profit. Suppose these are average total cost and average variable cost. Here's where our price is set for this quantity. This margin right there, that's our profit. Woohoo! We're making a profit! Well, do you always make a profit in a monopolistic competition? No. Sometimes you lose money. What happens when you start losing money? Well, if you're losing money too often and too much, guess what? Get out of the business. Same as when you're in here, same as when you're in here. Right? The question though is, will you make a, a profit over the long run? In a monopoly, you can. In a perfect competition, 
No way. In monopolistic pro competition, nope, you're not going to make a long run economic profit either. Why? Because it's still sort of easy to get in and out. Now, what that means is that if we are earning this economic profit for a little bit of time, right, there's still a whole bunch of other people in the market. And what happens is that when other people see that there's a profit, what do they do? They hop in. They create their own franchise. They create another franchise. Maybe someone opens up, a, you know, basic, even another McDonald's, you know, three blocks away. Right? Doesn't, doesn't mean that it's, they're going to compete with you even though it's the same franchise, right? But you're one McDonald's owner and someone else is a different one. Right? Unless you purchase those franchising rights entirely for the city, someone else can do it. No problem. So you're competing with more people. When more people get into the market, what ends up happening? Your demand starts to become more and more elastic. And what happens is that the elasticity of the demand is such that eventually the price that winds up being set where your demand curve and your average total cost curve come down and intersect, they're going to be tangential. They're going to hit in one spot and your price is going to be right where your average total cost curve is and you're still going to be wind up making no economic profit. Now, the reason why monopolistic competitions are a little bit better is that this is only a sort of easy entry and exit. So if you are making a profit, that profit's going to last longer because it's going to take people a longer time to get into the market to start basically cutting into your profit share, right? So it's okay that it, that it you know, it's, it's all right. It's still a competition. A competition means no economic profit. There might be a counting profit, right? Remember, there's a difference between those two. But there's no economic profit. Profit on top of the opportunity costs that you're, that you're losing. So monopolistic competitions, it's a merger of monopolies and, and perfect competition. It's really what almost every you know, market is out there nowadays, folks. There is differentiation in almost everything. When you turn on the TV, you can see ads for everything. Even the corn market, even the feed corn market. It's sad if you if you live in Iowa, which I, I have before, you will watch TV and end up seeing advertisements for different types of feed corn. Boom! It's like hello. It's it's all the same. It's feed corn. Well, that's me potentially believing that. But in the end, long run analysis, still not going to have a profit, and that's because of this. All right. And do realize that you're, you are also wasting a certain amount of resources when you're working in a monopolistic competition. Right? Notice that we're not producing somewhere towards the bottom of our average total cost curve because we're wasting money differentiating our products. We're wasting resources in order to be able to do that. So it's actually an inefficient market to be in a monopolistic competition because we waste money trying to, to get a little bit of a profit for a short amount of time. Yeah, we get that profit for a short amount of time, but we also cheat the customer out of savings in order to do that. Eh, you got to earn a profit some way, right? All right, well, that's monopolistic competition. We've got one more video where we're going to talk a little bit about oligopolies.